Sandra Miller, your transformational and mindset coach. I'm doing an entire anti-aging series from A to Z. So many people want to know about supplements and those are a lot of the questions that I get. I call this the smart consumer's guide to choosing supplements. It's just a small portion of this becoming ageless series that I started because so many people have questions about supplements. So first and foremost, I'm going to say we should be getting most of our nutrition through food. And I'm going to be sharing why that's so important in just a short time. You might want to grab your phone and you may want to take a photo of some of these slides because I'm going to be sharing with you the active forms that you should be looking for when you're choosing a supplement and what's not worth your money so you don't get ripped off. There are some 60 or more chemical elements that are found in the body, but what's interesting is that what they all do is still a little bit unknown. Out of all the known substances beneficial to human health, like antioxidants, we still don't know all of the components that each food contains and what they're actually doing. So one of the things, again, I'm gonna say about supplements is it's always better to get it from food. And I am gonna give you some nutrient-dense sources, best sources, worst sources, and why but also if you need to supplement, how to choose one. So are supplements essential? Well, sometimes. We know that the fat soluble vitamins are A, D, E, and K, and the water soluble vitamins are the B group and the Cs. So I'm gonna be talking a lot more about the Bs coming up, but since it's the first slide, I did want to just at least share with you a little bit about vitamin A coming up just to make a point. So what am I missing? Sometimes we just don't know. And the only real way to test is to test. <laughs> so you can't guess at what your body is or is not doing with a nutrient. And what I'm going to be revealing is why some of the ones that are in your medicine cabinet right now are garbage and you should just throw them down the toilet because that's where they end up. Deficiencies leave clothes, dry skin, brittle nails, heart palpitations. There's different clues that you might be missing a certain vitamin in its proper form. So the first thing, since it's here on the slide and I didn't want to bypass it, I'm going to talk about vitamin A for a second. So vitamin A is a fat soluble vitamin. And most people know that when you see that bright orange color, there's a lot of vitamin A, right? And so many people try to get vitamin A from their diet or their supplement contains beta carotene. So what's the problem with that? If you're eating a diet high in these orange foods, deep orange, you might still be vitamin A deficient. And there's a reason for that. There are two kinds of vitamin A. There is beta carotene, like you would get from a sweet potato. And then there's what we call preformed A. And it is basically already in the form at which your body can use it. There's no conversion or any other action that has to occur for your body to use this. Now, while you might need some cofactors some friends with benefits that help certain nutrients get into cells or cross cell membranes better. Basically, nobody can really use the form of beta carotene that is in most supplements and most vegetables that are high in beta carotene. Now, animals can use beta carotene a lot better than humans can. Humans have to have the preformed A form of this vitamin to use it. So if the back of your vitamin bottle says beta carotene or you're loading up on sweet potatoes, cantaloupe and things like that, 
I'm sorry, you're not getting the vitamin A that your body can use. And while you might convert a little bit of it, it would take you a very long time and a very long time and a lot of food to even convert a small bit of what you can get in other sources. So you can also find the vitamin A that you can use in beef, fish, dairy, especially grass-fed butter, and especially in cod liver oil. Now, I just purchased my favorite cod liver oil in the world. I'm not a big fan of sucking down cod liver oil, and I know some people grew up on it, but it's pretty gross for most people. I use a brand called Carlson, and they make the cod liver oil taste like lemon. I put it on my salad dressing. I drizzle it over fish after it's out of the oven and starting to cool off. It is the absolute best way to get your vitamin A if you can get it that way. Now, some people are vegetarian. They're not willing to eat fish or they're not doing grass-fed butter or they're certainly not doing cod liver oil. Plan to be deficient, look for the symptoms of vitamin A deficiency. Beta carotene from a sweet potato or cantaloupe requires conversion. And I'm gonna talk a lot about conversion when I get down into the B vitamin section. But the thing is, is our bodies don't convert very well, if at all. And we even have certain genes that are present we all have these little gene glitches, they, things that just work a little different than the average. And some of us don't convert at all. So for all of the good we feel like we're doing, we're really not getting what we think that we're getting. No plant food contains usable vitamin A. It has to be converted. And here's the sad thing, only 3% of what you eat in beta carotene will get converted to pro-vitamin A. So there are, like I said, certain gene variants that cause us not to be able to convert this. How do you know if you're converting or not? You will never know unless you test your genes. So if you're not gonna test genes, you might want to look into the butter, cod liver oil, full fat dairy kind of option if you truly want vitamin A. Vitamin A is critical for the macula and the retina and eye health. So macular degeneration is ridiculously rampant today. And that's because so many people are switching to vegan diets and they are absolutely unable to convert or come up with enough of this vitamin. And it doesn't often show effects for many years, sometimes even decades. So there are synthetic dangers to taking a supplement not in its active form. If you don't get a supplement from its active form, it's a crapshoot. You're literally playing Russian roulette with your health. Active forms really, really matter. So if your supplement says retinol acetate, that's a no. That is a non-converting type of vitamin A. And that's what most supplements contain. Also, in order to convert or in order to use, we need to have these cofactors, iron, zinc, riboflavin, and niacin. What are the two highest sources of some of those? Meat and shellfish.